Aloha, and welcome back to another episode of Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Today we have a special guest for you. He is, in fact, the president and CEO of the Hawaii Tourism Authority. It's my pleasure to welcome to our podcast, John D. Free. Hi, John. How are you? Governor Hey, I'm fine. You know, today we have red and blue states, and on today's podcast, we have red and blue Hawaiians here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. John's a friend of ours for a number of years, and it's always a pleasure to see him. John, tell, you know, for our audience sake, before you were uh, CEO of the HTA, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, I know that you're, you're uh, participating with us from Kona, which is, uh, I guess, your your residence whenever you don't have to be in Honolulu. Yes, my wife and I have been residing in Kona for 32 years. And um, in as much as our staff at HDA is still teleworking, um, I get into Honolulu about four or five days a week and then return to Kona, uh, if for no other reason but to reboot and get ready for the following <laughs> week. So that, that- that seems like the uh, good thing to to do. Now, what we're going the topic of our show today is regenerative tourism. So you are in charge of the industry in Hawaii, and, and one of the questions, obviously, is what is re- regenerative tourism? But but before we get there, w- describe a little bit about the tourist industry in Hawaii. I mean, how large is it? How well, how it yeah, is? Yeah, sure. Sure. And let's go back to pre-pandemic uh, calendar year 2019, when uh, Hawaii set a record number of visitor arrivals, 10,400,000. First time uh, visitor arrivals had surpassed 10 million. That translated into about 17.8 billion in visitor spending, of which uh, 2.2 billion came in the form of state tax revenue. And inside that 2.2 billion number is roughly just over 600 million in transient accommodation tax. So when you look at the scale of it, uh, 2 billion is roughly the budget, annual budget for the Department of Education, but it'll give our um, viewers uh, some frame of reference as to the scale that the industry has grown to. And I heard you had about, what, how many thousand workers uh, work in the industry? Well, actually, you got closer to like 220,000 uh, employed wow. by wow. the industry. So when the collapse happened, uh, my concern, many of us in the industry were concerned about the financial, emotional, social impacts on people who derive their livelihood from the industry. How much of, where are we now? I mean, how much of a recovery has occurred? You know, uh, the recovery is still somewhat sporadic. We have not uh, benefited yet from the return of uh, multiple international markets, but there's been a pent up demand in America that has uh, made up for that. I'll give you a snapshot is in the month of August, uh, 2022, there was a reduction of 10% in visitor arrivals and an increase of 13.8% in spending. So in in the month of August alone, 1.7 billion in visitor expenditures was achieved, again, with 10% less the number of visitors. So those are good indicators, but uh, it's still not a stabilized total market return. Uh, It'll take us a while to get there. So obviously this is a really important industry for Hawaii and and, and for, well, for you know, for all of us, and and yet, I I, I sense that uh, during the pandemic, for uh, for instance, there was a lot of conversations about whether we really want uh, this level of tourism coming to the state of Hawaii and the like. You know, when I was in office back in the 1980s and early 90s, we thought that. Uh, six million tourists would be about getting close to the maximum number that we we, we should have. And yet, we, you know, before the pandemic, we went all the way up to 10 million plus. 
and so you know so there's been all this discussion and uh, what do you think of yeah of, you know you know the the increase going from eight million to ten million plus was achieved without the net number of hotel rooms increasing so where did that extra 2.4 million go well they ended up in places they didn't belong in illegal short-term vacation rentals which is one of the reasons why you see every mayor every county every county council uh finally playing hardball with uh new policies and more importantly in enforcement of those policies where those kinds of accommodations don't belong and are in violation of the county code. And so I think taking that, what I refer to as that shadow inventory off the market will help to stabilize the numbers, not affect adversely the hotel and condominium occupancies because those are authorized, those are paying the transient accommodation tax. Um, and so, we're gonna be able to find our balance. And I, I, I would say this, John, that of, if we're going to do tourism at this scale, we need better systems in place so that visitors and local residents can make real-time decisions um, because they've got the information. If I know there are 2000 people at Hanama Bay, I don't wanna be right. 2001, whether I'm local <laughs> or, or visiting, right? I'll go right. to Bishop Museum or I'll go someplace else, but somebody's got to, in my mobile device, give me that information. And those are the kinds of systems that will allow us to work at this scale without having this adverse impact or over congestion or over tourism that we're now experiencing because people lack the, the real time information to make real time de decisions. What, what as a result of all of this, though, is that we're hearing this, this term, regenerative tourism, a different kind of tourism, pivoting from, you know, what we used to think as normal, which is just bringing tourists into Hawaii. What is that all about? Well, you know, the existing system or the system that is, is doing, go back to 2019, that system was doing exactly what it was designed to do. More, 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 right? We've expanded our airports, the total number of gates, not because we wanted less visitors, but because we wanted more, yeah. right? And, and so um, when, you, when you look at this, I think if you take tourism off that term and just look at what regenerative means, to those of us that are Native Hawaiian, to those of us who are multi-generational Kama'aina, we actually descend from a regenerative uh, life style and life philosophy, okay? And, and what's encouraging to me, the more we learn about these regenerative industries, regenerative tourism models, is that the value system aligns with the ancestral traditional ways of, um, that come from Hawaii. And so that's why I'm encouraged by the natural fit. And when, when you align with that value system, um, the impact that our industry is having on the natural environment becomes extremely important. The impact it's having on Hawaiian culture and traditional practices, we have to be accountable to that. And the impact we're having on the spirit of our community is something that we also have to account for, right? And so in January 2020, the HTA uh, Board of Directors adopted a five-year strategic plan that prioritized um, the natural environment, natural resources, wine culture, community, and global branding. And so we now have a strategy and a, uh, a business approach that takes into consideration that comprehensive um, world that we impact both favorably or unfavorably if we're not responsible. Now, this plan has been, uh, I presume, been worked on for a period of years. I mean, some somebody had to come up with all of this. Uh, I'll tell you who came up with it, the people of the community, because in calendar year 2019, as the HDA 
uh, staff and team of consultants went island to island, um, hearing the concerns um, from both those that are directly involved in tourism and those who have nothing to do with tourism. Um, after that full calendar year, they, they ended up producing a strategic plan, which frankly caught my eye, because if those four pillars, natural resources, wine culture, community, and branding. Back when I started an in industry, the four pillars would have been hotels, airlines, um, retail, and attractions, right? It right. would have been very insular. Uh, we, would have, we would have said local people, be thankful for the jobs we create, be thankful for the tax revenue we generate, and, and just be happy. Well, those days are gone, and, and they should be gone. Uh, Communities are not going to be spectators to their own future. They're going to be engaged, um, and we're having to work face to face with them. And that there was another word that was the opposite of regenerative. Uh, it was uh, ec extractive, and it seemed like the model you just described, where everybody's focusing in on, you know, the, the hotels, the people coming, it seemed like it was. It was doing that. It was mining Hawaii in a way. Yeah, and and uh, you know the the extent to which revenues were leaving the islands, right? Profits were leaving the islands. I think the re the regenerative model, um, frankly, tourism again at this scale, we're going to end up seeing, in my opinion, what is a twenty first century version, evolving of a new kapu system. Okay, you cannot just burn out the natural environment 24-7, 365 days a year. And we're going to have to impose a discipline on ourselves that the, the community is frankly going to see it. And they're going to say, guess what? During this period, we know from our ancestral knowledge that we ought to leave this area alone, <clears throat> whether it's a coastal zone, whether it's a forest, whether it's a trail. And I know that the whole industry is not quite ready to understand this, but if, if you want the industry and you want our community to be around three generations from now, we cannot just keep doing it the same. You know, I wanna come back, uh, we're gonna take a short break now and we wanna come back and follow up on that thought because I think it's, it's important for people to understand that what you're talking about is a long range view of actually um, strengthening the industry in a way that uh, it'll be much more acceptable. So with and that- I predict, I predict the market is going to help drive this change, frankly. Okay, well, that's, we're gonna let you tell us how that's gonna happen. <laughs> If you enjoy watching ThinkTech, please consider making a tax-deductible gift to keep us going. Just click on the donate button on thinktechhawaii.com. Yes, click on the donate button on thinktechhawaii.com. ThinkTech, streaming great content every day on thinktechhawaii.com, YouTube, and Vimeo. Available on demand on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and other social media, and regularly broadcast on Olelo. Think Tech. Video with vision, always learning. Thanks so much for your interest and support. Aloha. And thanks so much for being such a good friend of Think Tech and a member of our Think Tech family. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahe and our guest this afternoon, John DeFries, who is the president and CEO of the Hawaii Tourism Authority. And we were just talking about what it means to have an industry that is regenerative. That as I assume means that it strengthens Hawaii's uh, beauty and resources as opposed to just take something from it. So. John, you were explaining this when we went on the break and the idea of keeping 
Hawaii viable for generations. Yeah, you know, in the, in, uh, in the business world, we're accountable daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly earnings, quarterly expenditures, all that. That continues to be a priority. But we cannot do just that at the expense of not looking three generations ahead, right? So if you, if you go back to the strategic plan that HDA adopted January 2020, if I said to our viewers, do you want the natural resource base of Hawaii to be in better condition three generations from now? I have no doubt there'll be unanimous agreement. Do you want Hawaiian language and traditional practices of Hawaiian culture to be flourishing to a greater degree three generations from now? Again, there'd be unanimous support. And if I said, do you want to see the fabric of our multi-ethnic community held together by the spirit of aloha? more resilient as a fabric, three generations from now, again, unanimous. Okay, if we all agree on that, then what do we need to do today to put Hawaii on that trajectory, right? Exactly, what do we right. need to do today? Okay, to and what we need to do today is, and, and we're beginning to see this sprout in our communities, where communities who are sensitive to those three, culture, environment, and community well-being are saying, wait a minute, Hyena, Hawaii, right? Had a, uh, had a major storm that shut all the roads down. The people up there were, were suffering on one end, but they also felt like they got their community back, right? Because the thousands of visitors were not able to access them. And in that downtime, together with the private and public sector, state and county government, HDA was involved in it as well, the community leaders actually have put together a, a plan that now manages the flow of traffic in and out of Hyena, uh, derives revenue, so it's revenue producing, that can now be reinvested in the health of the community, in the well-being of the natural environment. Here in Kona at Kaupulehu, 3.6 mile shoreline, okay, in 2016, a 10-year moratorium no fishing, no harvesting of marine life, right? That type of discipline and that type of community leadership is now moving to the forefront. And the reason this Kaupuleu is important is when Hualalai Resort was developed, the developer needed to provide uh, vehicle access to the ocean. When that happened, you increased the number of uh, fisher people that came down and harvested and it resulted in overfishing and overharvesting. So it's right? not only the tourists that sometimes are destroying That's right. it. That's right. So this, this discipline of understanding that certain species of life, flora, fauna, fish, you know, wildlife, they need time to reproduce. They need time to regenerate. And if, if Hawaii is going to be as as much of a attraction to a global visitor market, those areas have to be in great shape uh, three generations from now. And those of us that live here want that because that's where the great grandchildren live, right? You know, you know it's really interesting though, because what you're suggesting is that the market is actually in a way going to demand some of this uh, Changes but, some of this well, ideas of you preservation know, a, and conservation. There are increased indications that the traveler is becoming more mindful in search of more meaningful experience, experiences and more authenticity. And the only place you can get authenticity is from the community, right? You cannot import it. Right, you, you right. You attempt to fabricate it, right? But, but uh, the market is going to smell it out over time. And this generation or two behind us, they're going to be increasingly more sensitive and attracted to places that are, are mindful of how to care for their own home. You know, it's really interesting, but in the past, you and I have had some discussions about the kinds of things that I guess this model of tourism might be able to support. And one of the things we talked about was the idea about using local resources like food produced in Hawaii and the rest 
And you and I, for example, talked about the idea about, you know, cattle. I mean, about beef, buying beef locally, uh, which is, you know, where the world's going. Grass-fed beef. And, and where, where does that all, how does that all fit into this? Well, it, 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 every time tourism is in trouble, we, we like to talk about the need to diversify the, in the, the, the economy. And then when tourism recovers, we stop talking about it, right? So right. tourism has always been positioned as the antithesis. What I'm suggesting is tourism can actually drive diversification, right? So if there's a market demand within our hotels and restaurants for locally grown produce, locally caught fish, uh, locally grown beef, right? And the quality standards can be met then we have just diversified. We're on a way to diversifying those industries. And that example I used was actually initiated about 30 years ago around a concept called Hawaii regional cuisine, right? You had Peter Merriman, Roy Yamaguchi, Alan Wong, Sam Choi, you go right down the list. When they decided to brand Hawaii regional cuisine, they altered the way the local fishermen saw the opportunity, the local ranchers saw the opportunity in farmers. So where else? Um, the reason we have some of the top, top architectural firms in the world is because they had a client base over the last four decades made up of hotels and resorts, right? And so that diversified the, the economy by growing architecture, right? And you go right down the list. So. Tourism, if you open the shell of tourism, what you're going to find is a collection of industries, small businesses, uh, arts and crafts. So you go right down. Um, we have a better IT uh, industry today because of tourism. You know, and, and uh, I know you and I talk, uh, spent some time talking about, uh, talking with some Carol, Carl, Carl Farmer, uh, this, uh, this, uh, Last weekend, and tell, tell us a little bit about that, how that industry might fit in all of this. Sure. Well, I, I think Kalo, besides the health value and cultural significance of Kalo itself, the, the, the mindset, the value system, the awareness of Kalo, that Kalo society throughout our state is one that is very in tune with community, very in tune with nature, and, and very much a traditional practice of the Hawaiians, right? And so that when we talk about Kalo, we're talking about a, a whole different mindset, right? So you and I were at the Hawaii Executive Collaborative where Kalo was the focus on day one. And we heard from the Rapoon brothers and uh, Dean Wilhelm and Pael Bort, but and then in the course of it, we kind of stumbled on to the fact that this was a gathering of colonizers and that we're <laughs> on our way to colonize Hawaii. colonization of Hawaii, right? And, and it's a, obviously a play on words and, and, and uh, we all sang poi to the world. Um, <laughs> in you, well, you, in, you let it out, you know. <laughs> so, you well, know, it's really interesting, though, because what you're really talking about is uh, is a tourist industry that uh, is friendly. It's 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 uh, I, I guess local friendly. I mean, it's people in Hawaii could get excited about because it reinforces the lifestyle that they want and hope to have for their children. You know, John. It's the the reason I wanted to become the president of HTA, and you and I talked about it when I first applied, had less to do with tourism because I understood the importance of it. I've grown up in it. Tourism for me is like the college I didn't go to. So I'm very yeah. protective of it in the sense that it's my alma mater, okay? But that wasn't what caused me to come to HTA. What caused me to come to HTA was really built around a mantra of malama ku'uhome, caring for our beloved home, caring for my beloved home, 
Right. And, and tourism then becomes an instrument of caring for my beloved home. If it's redesigned correctly, reimagined correctly, um, it can actually help grow uh, Hawaiian cultural practices. It can help preserve our natural environment and it can nurture the multi-ethnic makeup of our communities. And so, but it wasn't about tourism first. It really had more to do with my own ohana and my own orientation toward the community needing help. And how does tourism support that? You know, that's a really important point, a really important point, and it deserves attention, not just from the tourist industry, but for industry in general, business in general in Hawaii. How, how does doing business in Hawaii reinforces the best things about Hawaii? You know, and, and, the, and that's a little, I'm beginning to see what you mean by regenerative tourism. Well, and because we, we've got to regenerate together, right? So you look at certain organizations, Hawaii Executive Collaborative, Hawaii Community Foundation, Hawaii Green Growth. You look at what's happening up at East West Center, right? You look at what's happening at the public school system under our new superintendent Hayashi. Um, everybody is resonating and looking for ways to implement these types of regenerative practices in it. Um, and, and they get translated into some real fundamental things like affordable housing, um, more affordable health care, right? Um, more equity in access to public education, right? These are all non-tourism in one sense, but everything related to tourism because the only way to get there is you need a major economic driver. And when we're talking about 1.7 billion being spent in one month, um, you'd be hard pressed to, to not understand the value of, of tourism. Well, you know, unfortunately, we're, we're right out of time, and uh, and I'm really enjoying this, uh, you know, this discussion. But you know, we're we're talking about regenerative tourism. But really, what you're suggesting is this may be uh, an important beginning of a pivot for the state of Hawaii when we start to look at regenerative. Uh, a regenerative future. Communities, really. Regenerative um, community. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the, the people are calling for it more and more. They deserve it. Um, caring for our home in our neighborhood first. And get, then getting tourism and other businesses in alignment with that um, is where I believe this is headed. And I, I'm quite, frankly, I'm invigorated by it. Um, well, you sound excited and you're getting me excited. And I, I want to thank you so much for agreeing to uh, be on our show this afternoon. And, you know, sometime in the future, I'd love to have you back to tell us some more about all the good things you've done. Yeah, happy to do it. And, and um, just grateful for the opportunity today. Thank you, John. Oh, yeah. Aloha. 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 Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.